Senor Aitor, welcome to Abu Dhabi. Welcome to Abu Dhabi Sports Channel. It's a privilege to have you with us in here in this football chat. Let's start first about your visit to Abu Dhabi, your program in developing the football managers, the football coaches in uh, Abu Dhabi clubs. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's uh, also a pleasure for me because to, to speak about football for me is uh, always amazing. And you know, my, the aim of my visit here is to, to try to to know each other with the clubs and with the coaches here in in Abu Dhabi because uh, for me as a as a coach the the most important thing is to to keep updated yourself and I think it's always important to to share your uh, your knowledge to share your uh, experiences and uh, I did something similar in, in Madrid with the with the coaches from from here and I am uh, coming here to to visit them again in these days from what you saw from your peers and Abu Dhabi, what is the ideas that you concluded about the football and the UAE in general and Abu Dhabi clubs in specific? I think uh, the football in the UAE is uh, always uh, progressing, always uh, growing and especially in, in Abu Dhabi because uh, again when I was uh, with them in, in Madrid and uh, now here I, I suppose it's going to be the same. Uh, uh, what I, I like, I, I love, is the, the passion that they have to, to learn and to share uh, knowledge from, from myself and, uh, you know, to, to keep improving because, uh, I said before, the football here is, is growing and uh, for football to, to grow, the most important thing is that the, the coaches are always uh, updated. Of course. In person, you, you have uh, an interesting career as player as a manager. What is your favorite period and uh, what memories do you carry from it? My favorite pe period, uh, I am the kind of person that I think that uh, is coming because, uh, you know, I've been so so lucky because uh, I had an amazing career as a, as a player and never imagined that I was going to win the trophies that I, I won. And then when I retired, uh, you know, to start uh, your career in the Spanish National Federation as a under 16, 17 national team coach, and then to join uh, Jose Mourinho in, in Real Madrid, and then to start my career in, in Middlesbrough to get promotion, to, to be in two, three clubs there, and then to go back to, to Spain to La Liga. So I think uh, uh, I never imagined that I was going to leave those moments, but uh, when you leave those moments, uh, you always want more and you want to to learn, so for that reason, my, my aim is to, to keep going. It's with different challenges, like playing for a club like Real Madrid or working in a club like Real Madrid and then moving to clubs with less pressures, like Granada, for example. And th like the adaptation is always different or difficult, if we can say, m moving from a place where you're demanded to get trophies, win titles, to a place where if you just secure your seat and the uh, first division is the most important thing. Do you think adaptation is the most important character that managers need? 100% because uh, again, you can have the, the knowledge, you can have uh, everything, but you need to adapt because uh, as you said perfectly, it's not the same to train in uh, Real Madrid than to train in in Middlesbrough when I arrived uh, because the team was going to League One and then two years and a half later we were in Premier League so the players were changing. Uh, I didn't know the league, I didn't know the country, I didn't speak as well as I speak now the, the language so when I went back to Granada it was uh, again I knew the league but uh, you know I had been there uh, six or seven years before so you need to add that again to the league, to the players, to the personality, to the culture, to the everything. So as a coach you need to, to know and you need the, the knowledge but it's true that you need to to know where you are to adapt as soon as possible and uh, more than uh, where you are uh, the, the character of the players, the character of the club, the character of everything. Real Madrid is your club as player, as a coach as well when you worked as assistant manager for Jose Mourinho. This giant that never stopped growing. How do you follow them these days and how do you assess the current period with Carlo Ancelotti? I think Carlo once again is doing an amazing job in, in, in Real Madrid because uh, you know he's the, the kind of coaches that the, 
He is not uh, always uh, or, uh, shouting or uh, silent or uh, angry or happy. He keeps always his, uh, his personality. Uh, the way that he managed the team with uh, his uh, character, with his knowledge, is amazing. Uh, I don't know how many injuries he has uh, this, uh, this year and he doesn't care. He, keep, uh, he keeps trusting the, the players who he has on the, on the squad. If he has to convince uh, Chouamini to play as a central defender, he's going to convince him. If he has to convince uh, Kamavinga to play as a left-back, he's going to convince him. So I think it's uh, really, really important for the success of, of Real Madrid. And I think uh, he knows perfectly what Real Madrid demands. It's not only about convincing him. It's about making it work very well. Like playing someone like Kamavinga in the center back would make any of the pundits analyze the game and say this is a wrong decision from Carlo Ancelotti. Yet Ancelotti and the player he chooses prove everyone else wrong by the way they play and perform. Yeah, fortunately, I told you that uh, he convinced the players because uh, even when uh, they don't want to play in those positions, uh, they are playing and they are playing well. And uh, Carlo has that uh, knowledge that if uh, he uses uh, every single player in a different position, is because uh, the player is going to perform well because uh, he's uh, so intelligent and uh, to play in Real Madrid is a privilege for everybody. So they know that to be in the first 11 in Real Madrid is uh, something, uh, something difficult. It's a transitional period where the big names, the older players, are replaced by new talents, young bloods. Uh, were you surprised with the speed of adaptation and the stability that the team has, even though with the departure of huge names and the uh, the arrival of uh, the young names? Yes, because, uh, you know, we were speaking a few years ago, one or two years about the Varane, Sergio Ramos, or uh, Casemiro. Casemiro, Benzema, and now they are not there, and the team is still at the top of the table. Uh, the team is uh, unbeaten in the Champions League, so this is one of the things that the Real Madrid is, is amazing. So, and m the more important thing for me the most important thing for me is that the, how young they are, because uh, the team is uh, completely new, but uh, the club, the president, once again, is doing an amazing job, and uh, the team is new, but all of them are 21, 22, Jude Belling, and uh, 21, uh, Chouameni, Kamavinga, so everybody is uh, Valverde, Brahim, so the, the team is new, but uh, if... Uh, everything goes in this way, Real Madrid is going to have a, a top team for a, for a while. Were you expecting a longer period of transition where the team would need time to find their stability? And what do you think is the reason behind speeding this uh, uh, transition uh, and uh, making the team coming back very soon to lead the table again and be very uh, close to win the La Liga? In Real Madrid you don't have time. Real Madrid is just uh, about winning. And the, the players who are arriving to Real Madrid, they know that the, there is not the yesterday or how important it was to win uh, 14 Champions League or the following one is the, the important one. And uh, the players who Real Madrid signs uh, is not just the because they are good players on the pitch. It's because they have the character, they have the, the mentality. And I told you, as soon as you arrive to Real Madrid, you, you realize that the, you have to progress every day, you have to improve every day, because it's so demanding to, to play in Real Madrid. This year they added Bellingham, and he became like a huge addition for the squad. Were you expecting this quick shining from Jude? I expected, uh, because uh, I know him, I arrived to Birmingham uh, two months uh, after he left, so I was unlucky because I would have uh, loved to work with him, with him in, in Birmingham, but he signed for, um, for Dortmund, so I know him, I know his family, I know his brother, who is playing in Sunderland really well, and uh, he didn't uh, surprise me because uh, you know that uh, he's an amazing player, but he's also a, a really, really good person. Uh, really humble, uh, really knowing what the, he is doing. When he left uh, Birmingham, he could have gone to every single club and he decided to go to Dortmund because uh, at that time 
him and his family decided that he was the, f the best step for him. And now, after two, three years in, in Dortmund, he could have gone to a lot of play, uh, teams in, in Premier League, uh, earning much more money. But he knew that his team now, his step was uh, Real Madrid. So he is doing uh, everything perfect in his career. And uh, a player for, uh, for Real Madrid like him is, uh, is fitting perfect. Yes, but greater name with a bigger or longer experience have moved to Real Madrid. And they failed to convince people especially in the debut season. This boy is coming and he's making everyone in Spain speaks about him. Yes, because again, he has uh, his ideas uh, clear. He has uh, an amazing quality. He has the character to be followed for other players. So he's not the kind of player who arrives to Real Madrid and to see, oh, I had to follow this, or I had to follow that one. Obviously he's doing, because uh, when you have in your position players like uh, Tony Cross or, or, or Luka Modric, uh, you have to follow them and you have to learn from, from them. But it's true that he has his own character to say since the first day, okay, they are, I respect them, I'm gonna learn from them, but I am Jude Bellingham and I'm gonna make my, my steps. Now the speaks are, uh louder about Mbappé. It's the time a lot of people expecting him to be announced soon as the newest addition to the squad in Real Madrid. Is it like the jewel that make the crown complete for Real Madrid? What do you think about Kylian and what is he going to do? to Les Marengues? I don't know yet, but uh, as a Real Madrid supporter, uh, I would love to, to see Gillian uh, wearing the Real Madrid uh, shirt. But uh, you said that is the, the full package. I think Real Madrid is never full. So for sure, uh, the president will be working in the, in the next one. But let's see what is happening with, the, with Gillian. Uh, everybody says that uh, he's going there, but uh, until the day that he's not there, I, I can't uh, say anything. Yeah, but with the squad, the team already having and adding Kylian and Papi to it, it makes Real Madrid having another Galacticus. The previous experience of Galacticus was shining and branding. It was such a great experience in the world of sport. But in terms of title, success in the field, it wasn't equivalent. Do you think this idea will come back about the Galacticos and would it be different in the sport outcome? I think it's, uh, it's different because uh, the players who are there in Real Madrid can be Galacticos while the players who arrived to Real Madrid I think were Galacticos at that time. So the first one was Figo, the second one was Zidane, the third one was Ronaldo, the third Beckham, so all of them at the time they were in Galacticos. Now, if you speak about Bellingham, it can be, he is a Galactico now, but he wasn't uh, six months ago. Yeah. Or Chouameni or Camavinga, uh, Vinicius, when he arrived, he wasn't a Galactico. So he ca they uh, can become Galacticos, but uh, playing together in, in Real Madrid. And in the other time, you know, they arrived as a, as a Galacticos. But it's true that they didn't have uh, the success that everybody was expecting. Let's say Galacticos and the making with Real Madrid. Yeah, which is more Football. important because, uh, you know, you brought them uh, when they were uh, kids. So I am really, really excited with the, with the future. Now it's, you know, Real Madrid is always there. And the domestic competition, they're the favorites. They're always in, in the nomination uh, shortlist in Europe. Of course, the same, but with Manchester City coming, growing, do you see a threat on Real Madrid, especially after what we saw last year and the way that Manchester City beat uh, Real Madrid? Do you think it's changing or it's going to still the same and what have happened in the last season is just a, a special case? Uh, both teams are, if not the best uh, two teams in Europe, uh, two of the best teams in in Europe, and it's true that the, the, the job that the Pep Guardiola is doing there and the uh, support that he's uh, getting from the from the board, from the country, from from everything is is amazing, and uh, is the the best example of a top coach in a place who is uh, who is supported by the 
by the board, by the by the club, but by by everybody with the players, uh, letting him to work in uh, in the way that the uh, Pep knows. And at the end of the day, he's won leagues, he's won the Champions League, so I think uh, he is doing not just him as a coach, uh, the the club as a as a club, they are doing so well. And again, is the the reflection when the things are uh, well done. At the end of the day, the the success is going to arrive. You know, Pep, you worked against him against when him. you were, and Real Madrid was one of the most bright periods of the Clásico between Real Madrid and Barcelona. Jose Mourinho with um, Real Madrid, Pep Guardiola with Barcelona. It was not only interesting in the field; it was also interesting in the touchline. How do you remember these moments? Well, well, there were, uh, as you said, uh, one of the brightest moments in the in the Clásicos because uh, at that time we knew that uh, every single one, the players, the Jose, the coaching staff, the medical department, everybody should do their best because uh, to compete against that Barcelona, we needed our uh, our best. And uh, when we arrived there, the gap was uh, so big. But it's true that when we left, the gap was uh, the we were at least as good as uh, as them. So I have a, a very good memories, and uh, and again we knew that it's not just the games against Barcelona. We knew that every single game in that uh, in that league was uh, really important because I think uh, the league that we won uh, with the records, I think we lost two games in the league. So it wasn't just the game against uh, Barcelona; it was every single game which we knew that we had uh, our best. Yeah, but these Clásicos had a higher level of tense than what we have experienced before or even. After, uh, how do you recall these moments? How did you live the preparations for 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 the games, especially the ones and the Champions League? Yeah, but you know it was because uh, I think at that time it was uh, Real Madrid against Barcelona, but it was also Mourinho against Guardiola, and it was also Cristiano Ronaldo against Messi. So those years uh, were the best uh, coaches there, the best players there, the best teams there. So again, the competition in between us uh, was. Uh, Really, really intense, and and again, so so demanding for for everything, and uh, you know, to live those uh, those games, uh, it was uh, now is a very good memories. Working with Mourinho, of course, is a great experience. How do you describe Mourinho as a manager, as a person, and uh, what do you say about the people who are claiming that the special one has lost his touch? He doesn't have what he had. In the previous years, first uh, and foremost, the, to work with him is uh, is amazing because uh, as a coach, as a professional, is uh, top, and uh, as a person, is even is even better. And when you have the relationship, uh, just not as a, his assistant, you have the the relationship as a as a friend with him is uh, something amazing. And uh, for the people who say that he's lost uh, something. It's just to remember then that the, uh, in his last uh, team he's won uh, one European trophy, and I don't remember how long uh, Rome uh, hadn't won the the previous uh, trophy. So I think Jose is always like that. Uh, Jose has uh, people who is gonna who are gonna criticize him and people who are gonna admire him. But if you look at his uh, career, uh, every single place that he's been, he's won trophies, and for sure. He will win uh, more trophies in, in the future. You know, criticisms are always attached to managers, but when it comes to Mourinho, they speak about the style of play, and you see a lot of managers are developing their style of play, entertaining the fans and the audience that are watching the games, while Mourinho is sticking to his old classic defensive way, a personality and a way of play that is totally opposite to the characteristics of him as a person. But uh, I don't agree <laughs> because uh, and the best example is that uh, if you are uh, defensive or if you don't uh, have that uh, 
those uh, skills, uh, it would have been impossible to win the the league with the records of points and, uh, and goals. So a defensive team uh, is impossible to to score uh, 121 goals that uh, we have scored or uh, to reach uh, 100 yes, points. Yes, but this is in the past. Uh, when the current days, it's different. You're seeing, like, we're following him in Rome when he was there, and before that in. Uh, Manchester United and Tottenham, uh, similar criticisms goes to the way of play, to the style of play, where a lot of managers are coming with a development for their way of plays. He sticks to the bus. You remember even once he was driving the bus of Rome. And a way of responding to yeah, the but again, I don't agree because uh, again, every single place uh, where he's been, uh, he's won trophies, and if you uh, listen players like uh, Dybala, for example, uh, in his last time he was uh, really grateful about uh, about Jose. So a player like Dybala, who is offensive, you know, uh, saying something well about Jose. So, but again, I think uh, most of the times the criticism is uh, more louder than uh, than the good things. Do you remember what he said about you when you uh, were sacked from Middlesbrough? No, I, I wasn't uh, sacked from Middlesbrough because it was a... Uh, yeah, yeah when you left Middlesbrough. Yeah, 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 yeah. The way he commented about it, he, it, it felt like he said uh, it's uh, expected because the first season he saved them from rele relegation, the second season he was very close to promote, the third season he did promote, and the fourth season he had to be sacked. No, but you know, it's, uh, it's Jose because, uh, you know, uh, Middlesbrough has been the, the best period in my in my career, and I still have a very good relationship uh, with the with the owners and uh, with the, with the people there. And uh, when you know Jose, and uh, obviously I know Jose, uh, at that time Peter Kenny was in Middlesbrough. Uh, Steve Gibson uh, knows uh, also Jose. Everybody knew that he was uh, he was joking because uh, we have a very good. Uh, we have a very good uh, relationship and at that time the, the answer was uh, in the press conference because uh, he played against Middlesbrough the following day that they had left uh, the club and I think it was just a, a joke knowing Jose. Would you be interested in joining him if you received the call? I don't think so because uh, again now I'm starting my my career I'm really pleased with my own uh, career and uh, I have very good uh, experiences, especially in uh, in England. But uh, I like to to keep going with my career because, again, when when you start uh, alone, I think you want to to do your own career. Nice. Uh, one of the names that you've worked with as a player is now making a great success as a coach, Xavi Alonso. In Real Madrid, when he was playing, and you were the assistant manager. Were you expecting such a manager and this player? Look, the first time I played with uh, Xavi Alonso, I was 28, 29, and he was 21. And we shared the Pais Basque uh, national team because uh, we played uh, a game in, on Christmas and we were uh, teammates. And since uh, he's uh, 20, 21, you could feel that he was a coach. And then after 15 years, when we worked together, you could feel that he's the coach. He was the coach on the on the pitch, and then when you have the quality, you have the the knowledge, and uh, he's been always looking for uh, learning. He's been under Benitez. He's been under Guardiola. He's been under Ancelotti. He's been under Mourinho. So a part of his uh, knowledge, when he's been working with the best, uh, for me is not a, a surprise. And I was visiting him uh, three weeks ago uh, because I have a very good relationship with him and. You know the passion that he has in every single session, and uh, the knowledge and everything. Uh, you know that he's going to be a top, top coach. Maybe then you can tell us about his next destination. Where do I you see I him? Think, uh, I think he doesn't know because he's uh, enjoying it so much. Uh, the, the atmosphere in in Bayer Leverkusen is amazing. I share with them two or three days, and uh, from the CEO to to the kidman. So he is so happy there, and I think he's enjoying it. Uh, every single day that the, he will he will see. The records he's making with Bayer Leverkusen are astonishing, especially with the gap he's creating with uh, Bayern Munich. Yeah. And the way that, the, the that he is doing, yes. so it's not a, a coincidence because, uh, again, the team plays uh, really well in the domestic league, in the, 
in Europe, and uh, and again, it's uh, amazing. Where would you prefer to see him? Like, if it's your call, where would you think? Or if he asked you for an advice, where would you tell oh, him I to know. go? To stay in the Bundesliga, to go to the I Premiership? I don't to, to tell him anything, especially because uh, he's so so intelligent, and for sure the, the following step for him uh, will be something that he has uh, thought really, really careful. Now we are in this important period of the season where most of the titles are, let's say, uncovered in, in a big percentage. I want to ask you about who do you think is winning the Champions League this season? Where do you see it's, it's going? Who are the best nominees for, for the title? I think we've been speaking about them, Real Madrid and Man City. Because, uh, again, Man City is doing really well. And uh, Real Madrid, uh, with up and downs this season, especially for the, for the injuries, uh, at the end of the day, he's going to compete for the, for the Champions League. So if you ask me if I had to bet in two teams, uh, Real Madrid and, um, and Man City again. And in the La Liga, do you think uh, Real Madrid is yeah. winning it? It's just a matter of time? I or think you so. think Girona can make something big as I, a surprise? I they already made a surprise. I yes, think. and uh, again, another uh, team from the, from the group. And uh, I said uh, a few times in, uh, in the Tijedi Stadium with uh, Ferran Soriano and uh, Chiqui uh, one month or two months ago, and we were speaking about uh, Girona. And I said to, to Ferran that the success is now, but I think uh, the, the key of this success uh, came two years ago when uh, they were in the relegation position in second division. And he trusted the coach, he gave uh, them the, the trust, and now, or at that time, they were at the top of the Primera División. So, once again, it's the, not just how good the group is working with Man City, how, the, how good the group is working with every single team. And uh, I think the league is uh, really, really long, and uh, you know they don't have the the, the, the number of uh, players to to compete at the level. But uh, again, they are doing really, really well, and for sure. And I hope uh, they can uh, get qualified for the for the Champions League next year. Staying in La Liga, your rivals Barcelona, not having their best days with Xavi, who has announced that he's leaving the club. Were you expecting such a scenario for him, winning La Liga last season and this season announced to depart the club even before the end of the season? Uh, I don't think so because uh, you know these kind of teams are, uh, I told you, so so demanding. And uh, when you are working there, you know that the, what you did uh, yesterday is not important. Always, uh, everybody is going to ask you what is going, what are you going to do tomorrow. So. Is uh, now Barcelona is uh, not having a, a good year. Uh, let's see what is happening for the for the following year. But uh, you know, again, Real Madrid I think is uh, is the strongest team now in the in the league. Let's end with your future. Where do you see yourself next, and what are the plans for you? Well, the plans is to to find a a place which uh, I told you, uh, like uh, the City Group uh, or uh, Middlesbrough when I was there. Uh, a place where uh, the board, the, the club, the, the ownership uh, trust you, give you the, the tools to, to create something nice and uh, to live one, one experience in a, in a nice project to, to work. All the best, Senor Aitoro. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. <laughs>